phase as LeBlanc and Katarina are taken off the table here. I'm not sure where the standings lie and whether Bulldog go. have a chance to make it any further in the standings at this point in time with a draw, but I'm assuming they'll be trying their best as Rise gets banned. Mid lane really being targeted right now by both of these teams. Yeah, Camille going to be taken away as well. Fork's not going to be allowed to get that carry. Chase will be removed, and this has been a very standard back pick and ban phase. Obviously, Backlund not going to be allowed to get his Katarina and Brantek. Obviously, not wanting to play that one. Virus will be taken, which means now on to the first pick for Bulldog. They've got a lot of options here. They could take the Jin, as Jin is not banned and Varus is banned. That's kind of a, a line of thinking that we've seen a lot of teams employ, given that Jin kind of stands out as the best AD carry on this current patch when Varus is gone, and that was banned last game. So. That could be a pickup for Bulldog here on this first rotation. Seems to be the case. We'll get that Jin locked on in, which means Xenix now on second rotation. Do you think they'll lock in their AD carry as well, match that, and then go for something else? Or do you think they'll go for two more powerful picks? They could probably prioritize a jungler that they want here, as well as maybe getting their own support. AD carry or support. Going to be top lane, actually. Maokai, who has seen a lot of play recently over the last week. Yep. And going to lock in the Graves as well. For Sankus as well. I mean, Sankus is yeah. a gifted Graves player. Certainly is. I mean, Sankus is just a, a solid player all around. We saw his Ivan last game. Did some serious work up against Jets Graves. So actually, Sankus kind of saying, you want, you want to see how to Graves, mate? This is, this is going to be how he Graves. We'll see whether he will have a strong performance I wonder, or whether Jet can take it to him this game. I wonder whether Jet, okay, he goes onto the Rengar. I was wondering whether Jet might default back to an Elise that we've seen a lot of people pick up. And Jet has always kind of been known for his Elise, but he's actually going to go for the Rengar, which wasn't on the table last time round. we we'll to see if the UK teams can make Rengar work better than EU teams. Now that Brexit's happened, you know, maybe. Not it's actually happened yet, but the, happened, mate. the Brexit vote <laughs> has happened. So theoretically, you know, maybe we can make Rengar work better. Yeah, that makes sense. Brexit vote has happened, therefore, UK players can play Rengar. Seems good. Maybe they can follow in Impaler's footsteps. I just dropped the... I was fiddling with my pen. I've unscrewed the end and now I dropped it. So that's really sad times for me. No writing down the dark um, phase for Munchables. Karma will be the support lock-in for Bulldog, which means now Xenex kind of have to lock in Ash, surely. Because otherwise it's going to get banned. Yeah, I mean, you could also take the Sivir. Remember, Sivir, you know, works very well in yep. terms of shoving where lanes back out. I think we're actually being given a new pen. Oh my god. Look at this. This is why we pay them the big bucks. Tom Kench going to be the lock-in. It's something that Prosper has played like quite a lot over the course of the season, and he's actually a pretty good Tom Kench player in the bot lane. And we have seen a lot of people pick this into Rengar specifically. Yep. You know, Rengar jumps on a target, Tom Kench, you know, devours them, and suddenly Rengar kind of lost like a kitty in the middle of nowhere, has nothing else to attack, and has to kind of go for the Tom Kench, which kind of forces you in that bottle and if you're looking to make ganks to try and kill the time catch first which means you have to get through basically two health bars to make that happen now fiora taken away shikari does not want to go up against that split pusher while he's playing maokai wants to force the tank versus tank matchup if possible it's going to be misfortune band away from the side of bulldog making sure that prosfer doesn't get his big oh well no it's taking it away from inax in fact because he's already got top catch that's why a questionable ban for me, to be honest. I mean, uh, Misfortune has been a powerful AD carry. Yeah, but I don't know. I think there are better AD carries to ban. I would have banned Sivir and Ash and then really forced them onto something that's a little bit out there, like the Ezreal, which we've sometimes seen picked up. Gragas is now going to be the next ban here, so not going to allow Forks to play Gragas in the top lane, which has got a decent laning phase versus the Maokai. But then so does the Nautilus, so you could then default onto Nautilus if you absolutely wanted, which has got a good early game versus the Maokai. Well, the final ban is out. It's going to be a Syndra. That Greg has taken away from Forks. And now it's time to see what the side of Xenix are actually going to go for here. What are they going to lock in to pick with, up a priority? With the Maokai, it, a lot of people would go for the Sivir because it has a nice synergistic, you know, um, hard engage. Hard yeah. engage. You know, you give the Maokai the speed boost to get that twisted advance off. Inax could also go for the Ash. It kind of achieves the same thing, but obviously you have to hit the arrow to make that happen. Um, so it's more of a single target focus as opposed to a team-wide engage. And we've seen the NX, we placed the Ash very well. You see, you, you really didn't make it very hard for Xenix here to pick up their AD carry because you ban Misfortune and you ban Syndra. So 
you know, this was a pretty simple road for them. And now they're going to have their mid lane as their final pick, and that will allow Backlund to get the best opportunity possible. Yeah, going to a counter pick as well. Renekton taking away Forks. Going up to that top lane with that one. Oriana will be the lock in for Brad Tech. So playing this one safe. What do we what do we reckon for the counter pick in the mid lane? Cassiopeia? I mean Cassiopeia works fine. I mean you could see a, a multitude of things for Backland here. Likely not a vein. Probably not. Um <laughs> obviously Forks taking Ash the teleport mid. We used to see it way back in beta. Season one boys. Uh <laughs> Brad Tech's a great um Oriana player though. He often plays like incredibly safe. It's one of his best champions, if I'm completely honest. So that's actually gonna be the Z. That's not a matchup that it's that difficult for the Oriana though. I mean, if you're gonna pick a mid laner that you, you'd want to play into Zed, Oriana would be a choice for me because of the shield, you know, the zoning potential against a melee carry in the mid lane. That's not bad for Brad Tech, but Backland obviously backing himself to do well in the 1v1 matchup here. So Backland basically saying, I am mechanically one of the best mid laners in this league. And I'm gonna show it as I lock in Zed, lock in that assassin in the mid lane, Brad Tech, He's been struggling in lane uh, versus Backland here. Backland basically saying, do you know what? I'm going to go into a fairly unfavorable matchup and I'm still going to win it. Forks also looking in the Renekton, which is something that we have seen come out in the LCK and has now bled into other metas that you kind of pick it just to dominate the laning phase. You'll always have good split push pressure. And eventually as the game progresses, you will become less and less useful, but you'll always have a stun. You'll always have some armor shred in your kit as well. Dominus can kind of make you an annoyance in mid-game team yeah. fights too. So, I mean, Renekton has kind of been popularized because he kind of does well into these tank matchups. Always will have a, an advantage versus them. And you build some arm penetration in the form of Black Cleaver. You're kind of tanking naturally with Dominus. And you always have a stun built into your kit, which when you have that ferocity is an extended stun that is actually pretty significant on a single target. We'll see how that lane is going to pan out. But looking across the compositions, what are the goals of these two teams as we head into the game? I can't remember them, to be honest, mate. But honestly, when you've got the Malkai and the Ash together, I'm joking. When you've got the Malkai and the Ash together, you're always going to be looking to initiate some form of team fight. But then you add the Zed into the mix, it kind of goes askew because Zed will often go into a 1-4. So we might see a 1-4 envelop from these guys. And if Malkai continues to, to sort of take a side roll, you might see a 1-3-1 envelop. And then you just try and disengage and siege as best as possible because you've got the Ash, you've got the Graves. You can make rotations with those as a four, actually. And they've got great tower taking potential there. Zed, very likely for the most part, going to spend most of his time in a side lane. Whereas you've got a, a straight up team fight coming out from um, Bulldog, you've got, great, you've got great tower dive potential with the Oriana, combo with the Renekton and the Rengar, as well as obviously the Jin Ultimate doing serious work in that sense as well. Yeah, great ball delivery as well from Jet. Brad Tech just drops the shield onto the Rengar as he jumps in and tries to get a sick shockwave. We'll see if that's ever going to come to pass in this game. But default starts coming out from these two teams straight across the map. No crazy invades, no deep wards coming through. Just playing it safe to start things off. And now, let, I mean, let's take a look at some of these lane matchups. We've talked a little bit about the mid lane. We've talked a little bit about top as well. But down in this bottom side, we've got Inax having a bit of a disco on the Ash alongside of Tom Kench. And then we've got Chin and Karma. How do you see that lane panning out? Actually, you would give the advantage in the push to the Bulldog lineup because Synergy is going to be able to push quicker than Prosfer and Inax. Prosfer doesn't really have that much wave push built into his kit, so you're relying particularly on the Ash, you know, specifically, but that only really comes down to the volley, which has got a long cooldown in the early levels. So they're going to shove this Ash and Time Kenshin, you would imagine, for Fax and Synergy, which is going to relieve pressure on Jet, especially in the bot lane. You know, you're not going to be able to see any bot lane rotations take place. Depends on the, how easily... Brad Tech's going to be able to shove Backland in. You, you kind of want, when you have a Rengar, lanes that win naturally and can shove in naturally. So Forks and this bot lane is going to be fantastic for the Rengar. Just have to see how Brad Tech matches up against Backland. That'll be the one worrying thing that you could potentially uh, look out for in the Bulldog lineup. It's going to be an interesting one for sure. And I think all eyes are going to be on Sankas and Jet here. Both of these guys are very capable junglers, but Sankas really kind of 
uh, set the tone in the first game when he got first blood onto Jet and then immediately started spamming those emotes. I think Jet is going to be wanting a little bit of revenge in this one. Yeah, absolutely. But then again, not much revenge to be had pre-6. As we know, Rengar struggles to impact lanes pre-6. You know, realistically, the best course of action for a Rengar is to just power farm as best you can, allow your lanes to shove so you can kind of relieve pressure on any potential counter counter pushing actually you're seeing fax getting pushed in here i was expecting synergy to maybe be more aggressive with his um cues try and use the mantra cues to clear out some caster minions on the back line but it actually looks like the advantage is going over to inax and prosfair i kind of just think they're zoning away the bot lane from bulldog and not allowing them to get the, to get this push on and actually kind of going against what i expected inax and prosfair managed to get this shove on the go synergy and fax struggling to really Keep up with that one. Jet coming up very early into the top lane. Shikari already super low and will go down. First blood wow. goes the way of Jet, starting things off right. That is not what I expected from a Rengar. There are only limited areas that a Rengar can impact in, and going through a side brush in the top lane or a bot lane is kind of one of the main areas that you can impact pre-6. And they've already punished Shikari early on here. That's a great start for Jet and Bulldog. Yeah, and I mean... You said it yourself, you don't expect a Rengar to impact the game early on, and that's exactly why it works. That's exactly why he's able to get on into that top lane, get themselves the first kill of the game. Fantastic start for Bulldog here. We'll see whether Jet can snowball that into more. He was the one that managed to grab that first blood for himself. Yeah, and that will obviously give him an advantage in terms of experience. Get towards six more readily as well. Looks like some deep wards have come out from Sankus, though. He wants to keep tabs on Rengar when he does enter that red side of the jungle. But Rengar right now seems pretty keen to continue to snowball Forks' top lane. Heading up, going to avoid those wards once more. Going to walk through those side lane brushes. Got the double buff. Shikari doesn't have flash available. When these two couple of melee minions go down, he will have to push up just a little bit. The shove is going towards Forks right now. Shikari... It's going to have to be careful. Has to play the long con for this one. But it might just pay off in the end. Shikari going close on this one. And there is Jet jumps on in the route down onto Shikari. There are no summoners. And it's a second kill for Bulldog Forks grabbing this one. Yeah, Forks having a great performance on this one. And did a really good job of allowing that lane to slow push towards him. And Shikari was absolutely baited in here. Backland's got a 10 CS advantage over Brack, Brack taking this mid lane. Really trying to assert his dominance as Which, the better mid laner here. Yeah, and in a Zed versus Oriana matchup, you wouldn't expect a major CS lead this early. No, definitely not. If anything, you know, as a Zed, you're probably happy to go even in this particular matchup. But again, this is worrying trends for, for, for the top lane for Shikari, because if they can allow Forks to get such an advantage, he will continue to push that advantage. And eventually, as a Renekton, you get to a point where you can just slice and dice, jump in, get a free empowered Q and almost completely chunk your opposition member in lane. And that's kind of what I think Jet was been aiming to do. He's almost level six, by the way. So once he hits level six, you imagine he might look to either go top again or go bot. Definitely think like putting pressure on Shikari in this top lane is a good idea though, because you can kind of get, get generate a huge advantage for yourself as Bulldog by getting a huge split push presence in the early game due to that Renekton's advantage over the Maokai. Yeah. And, I mean, we said that this is all eyes on the junglers. This is all eyes on Jet and Sankus. And so far, Jet has been the superstar. Jet is the one that's really making an impact. And Sankus yet to have any influence on the map. And Shikari, who was also a huge influence on that uh, Camille last game, he's really not off to a great start at all on the Maokai. So far, 10 CS down. Yeah, I mean, but this is kind of what you expect. Especially if the Renekton receives early pressure, as Jet is now level 6, by the way. So, depending on where he wants to impact, he might actually end up going top lane again. Looks like he's poised for that. Looks like he's poised for either mid lane or top lane. Waiting for either one of them. Yep, we'll have the Thrill of the Hunt available. Bradtech very aware that Backlund now has his death mark available. Just consistently throwing out those shuriken, making sure that he's consistently getting that damage down. Jet gonna come on in. Shockwave onto Brackland. He's very low, but Deathmark goes straight across onto Brad Tech and will be able to get away. Jet flashes forward though and picks up the kill. Jet. Wow. Pre-six, post-six, already 
having huge influence across the map, and Sanka's kind of left for dead at this point in time. Sanka's maybe trying to go in here, but unfortunately, end of the line, probably not going to be close enough. Maybe was thinking about a flash QR combo, yeah. but unfortunately not able to do so. He's been very subdued this game. Got to give credit to Jet. We, we said that, you know, he's been improving as a jungler. He's been improving as a player. Has definitely had a huge impact with Bulldog early on here. Yeah, we said that one of the big things for Jet in this series was that he had to be proactive. He had to be the one making things happen for his team. And so far, he has now got two lanes off to a good start, however. Backland still with a significant CS lead in that mid lane. But Jet will be able to steal away a red buff and it's traded back by Sankers now. Heading into the bottom lane, Synergy might be the target, although Fax will get gobbled up here and might just be about to go down. Look at the damage coming on out. Inax gets the kill and gets the stun onto Synergy. He's going for the dive and it's a double kill. Hit six during that engage. I didn't think like Zenix were on the same page until the Ash Arrow came out, but I've got to say Prosfair, really good job to put pressure onto Fax early on, get that Devour. And Sankos is in the right place at the right time, facilitated by a lot of the early vision control he put down into the red side jungle of Jet, but they're going to put pressure onto Shikari once more here. Certainly are. He has to flash away Forks, who will survive the tower, but Shikari keeps himself alive. In the meantime, Xenex, they're looking for the first tower of the game, and they should be able to grab that one, which, despite all of the work that Jet had put into this early game to snowballing ahead, Xenex still have a 1,000 gold lead at nine minutes. He may have been able to pressure that top side of the map really well by Jet, but the bot side of the map was just losing consistently from mid to bot. Pressure was there for Xenex. They've got that pressure mounting up by pushing in early on the bot lane. Ash somehow solo pushing against the Karma. Synergy definitely didn't feel aggressive enough with his wave clear and wave shove potential. And now, despite all Jet's efforts, Bulldogs are on the back or on the back uh, foot this time round. And Backlund still, despite the advantage that Jet tried to procure Brad Tech, has that advantage in the mid lane. Didn't even bother with the uh, Hex Drinker, by the way. Doesn't feel threatened enough by the Orianna. Has gone straight for Serrated Dirk, looking towards a Ghost Blade early on. Yeah, he just wants to go straight for that lethality and just be as aggressive as possible. And that is Backlund in a nutshell, really. He wants to go for those 1v1s. He wants to dominate his opponents. Relieving pressure, by the way. Early rotation here. Relieves pressure onto Shikari in that 1v1 matchup versus the Renekton's, giving him a few minutes of respite to try and farm as best possible. And now he's going to shove those waves in, and there's more work for Forks to do now. He's, he's got no turret to rely on. It's a bit more of a target. It's a little bit more dangerous to shove that Maokai in in the bot lane tier one. And this is a good good start for the Zedix now. They kind of recovered after the early game fiasco they had, especially on that top side of the map. The good work done by uh, their bot side has allowed them to recuperate and find a foot to stand on in this early game. It's been all about the mid lane so far, though, in terms of the CS numbers, because Backlund is 30 CS up. Even though he did get ganked early, he's still 700, 800 gold ahead of Brad Tech, who has been really struggling, not just in this game, but in this entire series. Could have a fight coming up. Sankers hovering around this top side. He is moving down. He actually just blast coats himself back over. Yep. Sends wants, sends a message, you know. Just wants to deny any kind of engage potential from any latecomers to a fight. But it also denies um, anybody moving in from that blue side jungle. Actually, Shikari now target again. Yeah, Shikari underneath this tower. He's got that magic resist from his ult, but it's not going to save you from a Renekton and a Rengar. Mm -hmm. They get the kill, but in the meantime, Xenex have traded it for one up in this top lane. Synergy is looking like he's not got long left for the Earth. Will flash away to safety, but collateral damage is enough to finish that one off. And they're going to be able to push on, take another tier one turret here. And again, Xenex just seem to be one step ahead. Bulldog trying to replicate what Xenex have been doing, but you're not going to win the game by putting all of your eggs in the Renekton basket here, especially when your bot side of the map is getting flattened, your mid is getting flattened. It's going to be very difficult for, I think, for Bulldog to find any kind of recuperation. You've really only got that Rengar and the uh, the Renekton. And actually, I've got to praise Brad Jet here. Not knowing that he's 301, has decided to not go down the tankier build path that we sometimes see Rengars go for. He's maybe looking for an early sort of piece of pressure going towards a Black Cleaver. He's going to try and accelerate any kind of blow up potential that he has. Yeah, just wants to be able to one-shot people, wants to be able to affect this game fully, especially 
when he's up against a 2-0-2 Inax. He needs to be able to one-shot that Ash when we get into the team fight. Look at the exact reflection almost of items. Before that longsword was uh, undone by Sankus, it was almost an exact reflection on items between Jet and Sankus at this point in time. Jungle is very much toe-to-toe -to -toe on a game that definitely feels like it's keeling in, X in Xenex's favor. Yeah, and that's just the map pressure that they have. One and a half thousand is the gold lead. Fox is taking a bit of damage from Backlund, but he can't commit to denying that ward kill this early on in the game. Didn't have any teammates nearby to support him. She's gone for the full Ravenous Hydra here by Fox. Sometimes I like to pick up the Tiamat and then go for a Black Cleaver on Renekton just because you really only use the Tiamat active sometimes to cancel the animation of your W and then get another basic attack in straight afterwards. And then Black Cleaver probably you feel is going to be more useful against the Maokai, or, or for instance, but it's gone for the uh, the Ravenous Hydra here. Just gives him a little bit extra sustain, a bit more yep. flat damage coming out. Now the mid lane push starts. Nice little ultimate from Inax to deny the curtain call, and that is going to secure a third tower for Xenex, and even a teleport from Shikari to deny the counter tower in the top lane nothing the bulldog can do to stop that teleport now on to the cloud drake they want to get as much as they can as quick as they can the goal lead is 2000 in favor of xenex and they're going to get the first drake of the game backland hasn't yet tried to find a split position he's going in onto uh fax here he's all on his own right now will pull himself away but gets rooted up and jet is going to find that target blows him up deleted i mean I, at the end of the day Backland was just being way over aggressive on that one. Yeah, exhaust really shuts that Zed down. And actually now, good rotation by Bulldog. They're going to look towards this mid lane tier one to get some response yeah. in terms of their own structures. Going to see a response coming out from Xenex. Backpings coming through. They do have a big advantage in terms of numbers. Well, here we go. Fax is going to get engaged upon here by Shikari. Uses that ultimate to finish off the target, but he's traded back. It's two for Xenix, though, and they're looking for more. Sanka's trying to chase people on down right now. Inax doesn't have that Crystalline Arrow available, but Prosper has gone for the flank, and there's no way out for Forks. There's another one for Inax. Once again, Xenex winning out yet another fight. Prosper will use that Grey Health, and he will be able to consume Jet. Sankos should be able to finish this kill off. Flash away from Jet, just trying to pull himself to safety. Collateral damage not available, but there's the arrow, and there's the shutdown. Sankos gets the kill, 4-0-4. Four, four. Bam! Just like that, Xenex on top again. It was a good move by Bulldog, but a better response by Xenex. Collapsed all four members into that mid lane, and because... Fax was so low from that previous engage with Backland. Just allowed Shikari to flash engage with that Twisted Advance, yeah. find the kill onto him, off the back of the collateral damage and the ultimate coming out from Shikari. And once he was down, had they had the numbers advantage and they could just clean up. And Inax right now just saying, what lethality AD carries? I don't care what super strong this patch. I'm still going to be 2,000 gold up in my lane at 15 and a half minutes in the game. And not to mention the fact that Sankas... He's ahead of gold now. Even though Jet had such a great start to the game, he has fallen behind. Sankas is looking terrifying. Sorry, just had to uh, use the cough button. You are forgiven, my friend. You're right. Jet had a great start, but again, it was a great start to a Renekton lane, which is, is fantastic if your other lanes are going even because you can generate pressure on the top side of the map. You know, you can continue to pressure the Maokai. Look for 1v1s, look for tower dives, as they were. They were doing that. But the problem is the rest of the map lost so heavily that you ended up just hemorrhaging gold on your bot side of the map. So no matter how far you got your Renekton head, the timer that Renekton becomes effective gets less and less the worse that your team is doing. If your team stays even, Renekton can stay effective for longer because he gets stuck into this 1v1 with the, the Maokai for longer. He becomes more effective against the opposition because they don't have as much gold for longer. But when your, top, your bot side of the map does worse, suddenly Renekton becomes less effective because the, the gold being generated by the rest of your team means that the, sort of the power spike by Renekton is reduced. Because remember, power spikes are solely based on items, realistically, items and levels. So the, the worse that your bottom side of the map does, the more levels they get, the more items they get, the less effective Renekton becomes. Fox, forced to pop his Dominus early on in this fight. Prosper won't be able to get the consume here. Actually, 
might be able to as he lands a long range tongue lash and that means Forks will end up going down. Shockwave onto two though. Jet wants to punish but will be burst away. Synergy drops as well as Backland has arrived. Now Deathmark onto Fax. One more shuriken would do the job and it is going to be enough anyway because Shikari goes back in. It's three for nothing in favour of Xenix. Rad Tech absolutely no damage right now and look at this prosper they're gonna go heavy in and go for this tier two turret dive yeah i mean that's a the seeker's arm guard a lost chapter and fiendish codex fiendish codex that's not a lot of damage on the oriana right now yeah it's not looking very good right now but backlund has been taken out by jet but at what cost because inax and shikari and prosper and sankos the whole gang is here and well, it's an easy kill for Xenix, an easy trade. I've got to say, Backlund multiple times now has been way too aggressive on this set. But you know, he can do it. If your team is capitalizing on his aggression, every time something down the line has come from Backlund's aggression. First time round, the Jet, they got they got uh, Fax very low. Then that meant that the Maokai could kill him and they got the cleanup team fight. That time round, they just pick up the Rengar. I mean, it's almost there's almost something that comes off the back of it. There was one time where his team was doing Dragon, and they were guaranteed to get the Dragon no matter what. And then he went 4v1 in <laughs> the enemy blue side. Yeah, but that got Fax low, remember? That got Fax pretty low. Fax then went to siege the mid lane tower, and then that allowed Shikari to jump on him and kill him off the back of the collateral damage and the ultimate from the Malka. Did they? Yeah. Oh, okay. I remember. I don't remember the full uh, course of actions then, apparently. Forks managing to sidestep that arrow as it sails off and will hit the shopkeeper. Synergy flashing himself away to safety and will inspire himself with that shield. Classic setup here for Xenex now. With the Maokai, the Graves, the Ash, they've got very, very good tower pressure. They have real tower dive potential as well. And then, yeah. then you see the 1-4 that we expected from Xenix. The 1-4 has started to open up here. Looks like it's going to be an attempt at a 4 yeah. versus 5. Shockwave only on to Shikari though. He flashes away. He will be burst down though. Good start to the fight from Bulldog. And now they're on to Prosper. Great health will keep him alive for a little bit here. They disengage correctly. But in the end, it's a tower for a kill. Yeah, it wasn't a super impactful Shockwave. I like the idea from... Uh, Bulldog, that's exactly what you need to do against a split push. You try and force the engage, get the 4v5 advantage, and then try and then respond, hoping that you haven't lost much on the other side of the map. But it's a kill for a tower that's worth it for Xenix every day of the week. And now Backland is searching for something. Yeah, Backland wants these kills. He's going in on to Synergy. Gets the death mark down, but doesn't really commit to it. Synergy will survive. Burns the exhaust, though. Coming out from Brad Tech. Synergy still has his, his exhaust up. If they rotate these exhausts properly, Bracklin should never be in a position where he's going to impact a team fight. That's probably why you'll see him sit, sit in a split push role for the majority of the game. That will be another Cloud Drake going the way of Xenix. That's two Cloud Drakes now for them. They'll be able to zoom around the map as quick as they like. They will indeed. I was just checking if anyone's talking about it on Twitter. Not yet, but soon TM. Don't forget, you can get involved on Twitter using <laughs> the hashtag, hashtag ESL Prem. ESL Prem. That's how you guys at home but this is classic, join the conversation. This is classic Xenex, right? It doesn't feel like they're making massive moves in terms of team fights, but they're just making great macro play. I'm Still going to try and force the fight here, though, you think? Trying to force the issue. Jet will be able to get away with the help of Synergy. And look at this map play. They get themselves the blue buff. That's definitely what they were searching for, Kappa. Uh, Prosper taking a couple of tower shots there, but the Grey Health will heal him up once again. Xenex, they don't find what they're looking for, but they will back away, and they still have very strong control over this Baron area. Yeah, and again, Baron's probably going to be on the cards for Xenex pretty soon. Ping's going down by Bulldog to make sure that they try and garner some sort of vision control of the area. Like the idea from Xenix, though, trying to force the issue. Again, the scoreline is almost identical, 8 to 12, but it is another 7k gold advantage over to Xenix. They just somehow always come out on top here. Backland, again, seems to be going super aggressive. Backland does not care that much this game. Apparently, he just wants to be super aggressive. He will be punished for that one. He knew he was going to go down. But in the meantime, his team is just taking the Baron. Sankas and Inash 
in Ash, in Axe, on the Ash, <laughs> doing so much damage, and we'll be able to secure that objective. Backland, I mean, he even got the kill for it. It's not like he didn't get anything out of it himself. Yeah, and Shikari playing the fool in the mid lane, trying to keep Bulldog away from it. And that's kind of what Xenex have done off the back of Backland's pressure. Backland knew he was going to die, but the more time that he spent making Bulldog chase him, the more time that Xenex had to take that Baron. And again, another massive advantage opens up for the Xenex squad. Probably going to see um, Backland move into a side lane again, maybe see that 1 for 1 open up. Split pressure in the bot and top side and allow uh, Backlund to do his thing, try and take that tier two easily. Especially with the Baron now, going to be a lot easier. Yeah. The Baron might just be the final nail in the coffin here because the gold lead is 8,000 in favor of Xenix. They've got the Cloud Drakes if they need to zoom around the map. They've got the Baron if they want to siege some towers. And I would expect that they do teleport out. Oh! Forks just about gets away with it. And Backlund but in the meantime, Backlund's found himself a solo kill. Now Jet trying to punish this one, does try and get back into the situation. Redemption, though, keeping Backlund alive. He's just waiting for cooldowns, and Sankuz has joined the fray. Now Backlund jumps over to finish off the kill. Collateral damage on top of everything. But these split skirmishes are not going to favor Bulldog. And now Forks on the front line. He's just not tanky enough. Shockwave, but there's just no damage from Bradtech. Now the siege begins. Yeah, only the Morella and Omicom finished on Brad Tech right now. It's not like he's had a bad game. Just hasn't been able to generate those item spikes quick enough. Renekton really not in a great place either, only just having finished his Black Cleaver. The BDG doing their best to try and stop things from going too wrong here. But Brad Tech flashing away from that one. Synergy poking away at the back line, but Sankus doesn't go down, and it means that Inax has arrived and will finish off that tower in the meantime. Backlund. Pushing away in that bottom lane. The siege begins up on the top side of the map. Prospe with two perfect games, by the way, so far. Has yet to die. Didn't die on his Lulu in the last game either. A damn. Not bad. Jet going in on this one. He wants to make something happen, but takes too much damage. Inax rooted, but these Xenix health bars, while they're low, nobody seems to be able to finish the kills. It's a double for Shikari. Bradtech just trying to walk away with his life. Inax so low, but will get consumed by Prosper. Backland elsewhere on the map, still just putting on pressure, still just being a pain, a thorn in the side for BDG. Yeah, he's been a real issue for them, just generating pressure on the other side of the map, even if he goes down and dies for it. Oh my word, Inax takes a lot of damage there. Yeah, but Bradtech takes more. It's going to be Fax as well. Finished off by Backland. And that is going to be a second inhibitor. This is surely going to be the game right now. Baron still going to be lasting a couple more minutes here. Or a few more seconds at least. But with the supers coming down the mid lane, this should be enough. Xenex are looking to close this one out in a convincing series. Forks. Last hurrah as he goes in, but him and Jet will both drop alike. And it will be four kills going the way of Xenex, and it will be a Nexus going the way of Xenex. A 2-0 victory as they head to the finals in commanding fashion. Don't think anyone expected anything other than that, and it was classic Xenex style, even until the point where they just started generating huge advantages across the map. Just check out a series of their plays. They still somehow get the first structure of the game. A lot of this gen pressure generated by Backland again. Making Bulldog respond to his plays and allowing Xenex to capitalize with things across the map. Prosper again had a great game. Sankos finally found his feet after Jet really put the pressure on early on. But even despite that pressure, it was all onto the Renekton and the bot side of the map came through for Xenex as we have been so used to across the Premiership. Yeah, and there we have it.